Dear students, welcome to my video lecture. In this video, I am covering session 7 on sequences, the chapter sequences for 5th semester B.Sc. students of University of Mysore. So, I am going to cover the following concepts in this video. Definition of monotonic sequences examples of monotonic sequences and some theorems on monotonic sequences. So what are the prerequisites for this video? Definition of a sequence, you must be aware. Limit of a sequence, boundedness of a sequence in that supremum, infimum, upper bound, lower bound, etc. The nature of the sequences that is convergence, divergence and oscillation of a sequence. These are the prerequisites. When we come to monotonic sequences, what is a monotonic sequences? So in this definition 1, I am going to define a monotonic increasing sequence. A sequence Xn is said to be a monotonic increasing sequence if this condition holds that is xn plus 1 is greater than or equal to xn for any n in n i mean any term of the sequence is greater than or equal to its preceding term then it is a monotonic increasing sequence similarly in definition 2 a sequence xn is said to be monotonic decreasing if <coughs> xn plus 1 is less than or equal to xn for all n belongs to n that is any term is less than or equal to its preceding term in definition 3 we consider monotonic strictly increasing a sequence is said to be monotonic strictly increasing if xn plus 1 is greater than xn for any n belongs to n i mean any term of the sequence is strictly greater than its preceding term. Similarly, this condition. A sequence is said to be monotonic strictly decreasing if xn plus 1 is less than, strictly less than xn for any n. I mean, any term is strictly less than its preceding term. So, these are the four important definitions. <clears throat> See now, a sequence section is said to be monotonic, simply monotonic if it is any of the above four types. That is, if it is either monotonic increasing or strictly increasing or monotonic decreasing or strictly decreasing. Simply it is a monotonic sequence. Now let us come to examples of monotonic sequences. You consider this sequence n plus 1, the nth term is n plus 1. The sequence will be like this. The terms will be like this 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and so on. And no doubt it's a monotonic, strictly increasing. If you take any term and its preceding term, the condition of the definition 1 holds. Therefore, it is a monotonic, strictly increasing sequence. Obviously, it implies it's a monotonic sequence. Similarly, consider the sequence 1 by n. The terms are like this. If you look into the terms, term by term, if you move, you can confirm it's a monotonic, strictly decreasing sequence and hence obviously it is monotonic sequence. If you come to the sequence 1 minus 1 by n, the terms are like this. It is monotonic, strictly increasing and hence it is monotonic. You take this sequence xn, the terms are 20, 18, 16, 14, like this. If you continue like this, you can confirm it is a monotonic, strictly decreasing and hence it is monotonic sequence. Now, let us come to some theorems on monotonic sequences. So we can call them as properties of monotonic sequences. We shall prove them one by one. Theorem 1. A monotonic increasing sequence which is bounded above is convergent and of course it converges to its supremum. So it means 
monotonic increasing and bounded above is always convergent which always converges to its supremum that is the least upper bound so when we come to proof so what is to be considered let us consider a monotonic increasing sequence and bounded above once it is bounded above it has an upper bound and hence it has least upper bound that is the supremum let us consider m capital m as the supremum of the given sequence by the definition of supremum you recall the definition uh, there we have defined two conditions for supremum the first condition is xn is less than or is equal to the supremum m for any n any term is bounded above by capital m this is the condition 1 for supremum if you come to the condition 2 for any epsilon greater than 0 there exists some m small m in capital n such that x m is greater than m minus epsilon so this is condition 2 let it be 2 now since xn is monotonic increasing monotonic increasing means the condition will be xn is greater than or equal to xm whenever n is greater than m so that is the known condition therefore xn is greater than or equal to xm that is greater than m minus epsilon that is by the above condition 2 xm is greater than m minus epsilon so this is for any n greater than m this is by using 2 that implies xn is greater than m minus epsilon xn is greater than n minus m minus epsilon for any n greater than m so if you continue like this you have reversed okay m minus epsilon is less than xn simply it has been reversed and this xn is bounded by m xn is less than or is equal to m so and m is always less than m plus epsilon for any epsilon greater than 0 this is for all n greater than m and also by using 1 now that implies m minus epsilon is less than xn less than m plus epsilon so that you can write without any doubt this is for all n m greater than m from this you can write minus epsilon less than xn minus m that is less than epsilon and that implies modulus of xn minus m is less than epsilon so this is the definition of limit of xn limit of xn is capital m so now recall the definition of convergence of a sequence so from that we can conclude that the sequence xn is convergent and it converges to capital m that is the supremum of the sequence so proof ends now this is theorem 2 so it is similar to the previous theorem uh, here we consider monotonic decreasing sequence which is bounded below is convergent and converges to its infimum that is greatest lower bound okay so when we come to proof consider a monotonic decreasing sequence unbounded below that is xn once it is decreasing sequence it has a lower bound and of course it has greatest lower bound that is the infimum let capital l be the infimum of the sequence xn now recall the definition of infimum like supremum you recall the definition here also we have two conditions the condition one is any term xn is bounded below by capital l that is xn greater than or equal to capital l for all n this is the condition one similarly the condition two for any epsilon there is always some small m in n such that xm is less than capital l plus epsilon for any epsilon positive so this is the condition 2 now by data xn is monotonic decreasing decreasing means recall the definition of monotonic decreasing sequence xn is less than or equal to xm whenever 
n is greater than m. Therefore, xn is less than or is equal to xm, but from 2, xm is less than L plus epsilon. This is true for any n greater than m. They also by using. Now, that is written like this. Okay, that is being written. Xn, the same condition is written here. And this implies L is less than or equal to xn. Yes, we have that condition. xn is greater than or equal to L. And this xn, uh, yes, this has been written by using 1. And this continues with uh, less than or equal to xm. That is less than L plus epsilon. Same thing has been uh, written here. Okay. Now, this can be written as See, L minus epsilon is always less than L because of some positive epsilon and L is less than Xn and that is less than L plus epsilon. So, this can be written as minus epsilon is less than Xn minus L that is less than epsilon for all n greater than M and that implies modulus of Xn minus L is less than epsilon for all n after m. This yields limit of xn is capital L. Therefore, by the definition of convergence of a sequence, what do we conclude? xn is convergent and it converges to capital L that is the infimum. So, proof ends. Now, come to theorem 3. A monotonic increasing sequence which is not bounded above is divergent and of course it diverges to plus infinity. It is monotonic increasing and unbounded above which is divergent and diverges to plus infinity. Let us consider the proof. We shall consider the sequence Xn which is monotonic increasing and not bounded above, which is unbounded above. There is no upper bound. It means there is no upper bound. So, how do we understand this? You take any positive k, however large, however large, there always exists some small m in n such that the term xm will be greater than that k, however large k is. Okay. So, this is the case of unboundedness, unbounded above. Further, since Xn is monotonic increasing, by the definition of monotonic increasing case, we have this Xn will be greater than or equal to Xm whenever n is greater than m. This implies Xn, the same case, uh, same inequality is being considered and this Xm, Xm is greater than k, so which is uh, taken above okay xn greater than or equal to xm that is greater than k for all n after m so we can write this as xn is greater than k for all n after m after m you take any term any term that will be greater than k however large the k is okay the value of k so, this implies if you continue like this as n tends to infinity, the limit can be taken as positive infinity, positive infinity. So, once limit is positive infinity, obviously by the definition of divergence of a sequence, we can conclude the sequence xn is divergent and it diverges to plus infinity. So, here proof ends. Now, when we come to theorem 4 similar to theorem 3 a monotonic decreasing sequence which is not bounded below is divergent and which diverges to minus infinity when we come to the proof you consider xn which is a monotonic decreasing sequence and unbounded below not bounded below in the same way we can consider this you take any larger k that is for all k greater than 0 however large there always exists some m small m belongs to n such that the term xn xm less than minus k you understand this minus k because it's a lower bound case xm 
is less than minus k. <coughs> Since xn is monotonic decreasing, by the definition we have xn is less than or equal to xm whenever n is greater than m. And if you include <coughs> both the conditions, see xn is less than or equal to xm that is less than minus k for all n after m and you can conclude i mean you can write xn is less than minus k for all n after m so this is limit of xn equal to minus infinity so what do you conclude by the definition of divergence of a sequence we can conclude the sequence xn is divergent and which diverges to minus infinity so here the proof ends. Now let us come to the theorem 5. <clears throat> a monotonic sequence either converges or diverges but never oscillates. Any monotonic sequence you take okay, which is either convergent or divergent but not oscillatory. This is what we are going to prove. Okay, I am not going to prove this theorem and this is left as an exercise for students and I am giving some hint to prove this. So consider two cases that is increasing monotonic increasing and monotonic decreasing cases and also include all the above four results and you can conclude above four theorems you can include and you can conclude. Thank you all.